Chronic sinus disease is often caused by multiple factors, meaning that several factors contribute in one single patient to the development of chronic sinus disease. These factors may be anatomic factors, factors related to allergy, factors related to infection, as well as factors related to the environment. In one individual, it's often very challenging and difficult to find out which is the most important factor in the development of the disease. So therefore, we as clinicians tend to try to find uh, the reasons why patients develop chronic sinus disease. This may offer, often be triggered by an infectious agent, but also can occur out of the blues. And for us as clinicians, it's challenging really to pinpoint and to find the precise etiology in a single patient. We try to find if there are anatomical factors underlying the development of sinus disease, and also consider allergy as an important factor being responsible for part of the pathophysiology. Allergic problems nowadays occur in one third of the total population and may also contribute to the chronicity and the development of chronic sinus disease. Allergy is, however, not considered the cause of chronic sinus disease, but may contribute to the severity of the symptoms and also the burden of a patient with chronic sinus disease. And it makes sense to treat for allergies in patients that have chronic sinus disease. We often get questions from patients if an infection is the cause of chronic sinus disease, and there we have no precise view or knowledge about the precise role of uh, bacteria in the chronicity of chronic sinus disease. If a patient is having an acute exacerbation, meaning an acute onset of uh, symptoms and yellowish and greenish secretions in the nose, we consider that a manifestation of an infection. And for such a problem, you may consider oral antibiotics or local antibiotics. But for chronic sinus disease patients that have symptoms on a year-long basis, there the role of bacteria are not fully understood so far. And therefore, within the treatment algorithms, oral antibiotics are only considered in specific cases. So oral antibiotics are not the main, stay, the main uh, treatment for chronic sinus disease. When it then comes to pollution and environment, we also consider these factors of high importance in the development and the chronicity of disease, because whatever trigger may be present in the environment of the patients, and that may be a trigger in the occupational environment or a trigger in the house environment, like fungi, like uh, exposure to small particular matter or small uh, molecules in the air of the patients at home, these may all contribute to the development of chronic sinus disease. Nasal obstruction is one of the key symptoms of chronic sinus disease. We know that patients with chronic sinus disease present with headache, impaired smell, secretions and also nasal obstruction. Nasal obstruction means that the patient cannot breathe properly through the nose and this is causing a major impairment in their daily quality of life. The reason why breathing problems occur in CRS, in chronic rhinosinusitis, is mainly linked to the fact that the mucosa is swollen and the swelling of the nasal and sinonasal mucosa is a direct result of the inflammation. Inflammation is the result of a trigger in the environment that is actually causing inflammation and some, sometimes also infection uh, of the nasal and sinonasal mucosa, giving rise to a narrowing of the nasal cavity inside the nose, causing impaired breathing in a patient. And when you're not capable of breathing through the nose, this will not be associated with good qu sleep quality. And when patients do not sleep well at night, they have fatigue during the daytime and they don't function properly. The nose is also having major, uh, a major function when it comes to improving the quality of the air that reaches the lower airways. So when the nose is blocked 
and patients tend to breathe through the mouth, this is not having a good effect on the lower airways because the air that reaches the lower airways does not pass through the nose. And the nose is having a major function on the purification of the inspired air, the humidification and also the air conditioning. So the nose is warming up the air in order to prepare the air and the oxygen to arrive at the lower airways in an optimal condition. And we know that one third of the patients with chronic sinus disease, they develop lower airway dysfunction that may give rise to asthma, to chronic bronchi bronchitis or other conditions that are actually in part a result of the fact that the nose and the nasal functions are bypassed in patients with chronic sinus disease. When patients with chronic rhinosinusitis come to see a doctor or a pharmacist, they often ask about the first-line treatment options. And then we can consider a couple of options that could alleviate the symptoms in the majority of these patients. And first of all, we as a European expert panel would recommend nasal douching with saline as one of the first treatment options that patients could consider when they have chronic sinus disease. Nasal douching with saline means that patients are advised twice a day to rinse the sinonasal cavity with a saline solution, allowing them to rinse away all the pro-inflammatory triggers that are responsible for the disease development, as well as all the mediators that are released by the immune system and that contribute to the chronicity of the disease. Quite often we associate nasal douching with the prescription of a drug that is called a corticosteroid and we would recommend the spray with corticosteroid in association with nasal douching as first-line treatment for patients with chronic sinusitis. We consider the combination of nasal douching and nasal steroids effective in the majority of the patients that properly use this combination. The problem is that not all patients are adherent to these treatments or not all patients like to douche the nose on a regular basis and that would like to have alternative treatments. In those patients that fail nasal steroid treatment as well as nasal douching, we would recommend going one step further in the treatment algorithm that we find in the EPOS document. And the EPOS document is the European position paper on rhinosinusitis and nasal polyps. And there we would recommend as one of the other treatment options, long-term use of antibiotics. Not the regular antibiotics, but more antibiotics that are actually having an anti-inflammatory effect, meaning that they dampen the inflammation rather than killing the bacteria that are present in the sinonasal cavities. As we mentioned before, bacteria are not the main cause of chronic rhinosinusitis and may just be a trigger in the whole uh, um, etiology of patients with uh, chronic rhinosinusitis. Sinus surgery is indicated in those where we are convinced that medical treatment will not be able to cure the patient and where we think that sinus surgery is the best opportunity to reach the highest level of control in a patient. Sinus surgery is associated with a high likelihood of success in the majority of patients, but unfortunately, we cannot cure all patients with sinus surgery. In a recent large-scale study that we performed, it was shown very nicely that Two-thirds of the patients are doing very well after sinus surgery, but there is one-third of the patient that is actually um, continuing to have major symptoms, continuing to have uh, the need for oral antibiotics, even oral steroids, despite us having made major efforts in trying to optimize the condition of the sinuses by sinus surgery.